is an abomination. Kill her. Get out of my mind! Considering that all things Dune are trending, it's only right that we explore the major players and characters that make up the political diversity of the Dune universe. One of the most important figures and masterminds behind the happenings that led to Paul becoming the messiah of the Fremen happens to be Gaius Helen Mohayim, the leader of the Bene Gesserit Witches, a matriarchal magical institution whose goal is to bring about the birth of the Kwisatz Haderach. This video will break down all we know about this powerful witch and her political machinations, so keep watching. Before we get into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. She's in my mind. Who is Gaius Helen Mohayim? A brief introduction to this crucial character. To understand Gaius Helen Mohayim and her role in the Dune universe, first we need to understand who the Bene Gesserit are and what it is that they want. The Bene Gesserit is an ancient and covert group of women who are best known for directing and shaping political affairs in the Dune universe. What stands out about them is that all members of the Bene Gesserit have undergone extensive training to develop extraordinary abilities that are essentially psychic in nature and enable them to control some aspects of their own body as well as command others with their voice. This further makes them formidable enemies and great assets for rulers and emperors across the universe. Although the history of Bene Gesserit is not particularly well documented in the Dune series, the appendix of multiple revised editions of the initial novel provides more information and sheds light on the origins of this matriarchal and magical institution. The Butlerian Jihad, a turning point in Dune that symbolized the uprising against computers and thinking machines, appears to have produced the turmoil that gave rise to this organization. Over the course of 20 years, the Bene Gesserit underwent significant development as its current hierarchical organization was established around the time of the Battle of Corinth. The position and status of the leader of the Bene Gesserit, the Reverend Mother Superior, were cemented, and she had the power to wield ultimate authority over the other Reverend Mothers and Sisters by that point. The Sisters and the Reverend Mothers play the most significant roles in the Bene Gesserit's intricate structure, which is fashioned keeping in mind a strict hierarchy. Sisters of the Bene Gesserit receive instructions and carry out certain duties for the Order, such as having children with particular prominent people. The organization's leaders and elders, known as Reverend Mothers, go through the same training, but additionally, they consume a unique, extremely potent spice poison that grants them enhanced abilities if they are able to survive the ritual. The group's main objective is to advance humanity into a new era of greatness in order to save it from itself. The Bene Gesserit have several long-term plans and strategies to do this, some of which are specifically intended to help, and others of which are only intended to increase their power and influence. The Missionaria Protectiva, an old Gesserit program to transmit religion and mythology to as many primitive cultures as possible, is the most significant Bene Gesserit scheme, at least for Dune's plot. The idea behind it was to promote the cultural foundations that result in communities with matriarchal leaders like the Gesserit, and the conviction that a legendary messianic savior figure, the Kwisatz Haderach, would one day arrive. In fact, before Paul Atreides became the head of House Atreides, the Bene Gesserit turned to sway politics in the background. For more than a thousand years, they chose to remain in this position. Agents were successfully inserted into all the significant imperial courts and houses to monitor critical negotiations. And even though Paul became the Kwisatz Haderach, since it did not happen according to their plans, the Order, and Gaius Helen Mohayim in particular, were in strong opposition against Paul. But more on that later. The Bene Gesserit is led by the Reverend Mother Superior. However, the other Reverend Mothers, including Gaius as Helen Mohayim, also serve as leaders and elders that guide the organization and its members. She is described as looking like a witch, with sunken cheeks and eyes, an overlong nose, skin mottled with protruding veins, and eyes dark with the blue brilliance of her melange addiction in Frank Herbert's novel. She is also known to have silvery metal teeth, and in David Lynch's adaptation of the book from 1984, her glittering grimace is fairly noticeable. She is also otherwise described as having matted, spidery hair and glittering eyes. She is also noticeable intimidating and carries herself with grace and power, as can be seen in the movies and shows her character has been featured in. Although her students frequently refer to her as Reverend Mother, as when Mohaim 
Mohayim first meets Paul Atreides. Her full name, Gaius Helen Mohayim, carries particular significance through a naming process. Gaius, her middle name, is a Latin male name, as it is required for all reverend mothers, and is followed by Helen, an English female name, and Mohayim, a name that must be Arabic or another exotic name. This shows that she has a multiplicity of identities, all of which combine to make her who she is. The reverend mother Gaius Helen Mohayim has given her life to the Bene Gesserit and their cause, and thus she attends to what she believes to be the needs of the entire human race. This implies that she is willing to make sacrifices for the good of the group. She also notably fits into the witch archetype. She is rather elderly, exudes mysticism, and uses her mystic abilities to influence people's motivations in order to achieve her objectives. After all, the Reverend Mother's ambiguity is one of the things that makes her so fascinating. Does she have a good or bad character? Or like Paul, is she stuck in the middle? Well, let's take a look at the role she had to play in the first two Dune novels, specifically the hand she had in The Rise of Paul, the Messiah. She had a major role in the first two Dune novels. Mohayim is present in the story from the very beginning. The old crone Reverend Mother Mohayim is seen visiting Caladan at the start of Dune to test young Paul Atreides before he leaves for Arrakis with his father, Duke Leto, and mother, Lady Jessica, to take over control of spice manufacturing. We quickly learn that the Reverend Mother and Lady Jessica share a close relationship as she trained Paul's mother at the Bene Gesserit Academy on Wallach 9 decades earlier. Mohayim is seen holding a deadly poison needle, otherwise known as a gom jabbar, to Paul's neck when she first meets him as she administers an important test on Paul. She tells him that the gom jabbar will kill him instantaneously if he removes his hand from a box that causes agony by direct nerve induction. Paul is told by Mohayim that the test's objective is to determine whether he is truly human by putting him through pain as he uses reason and will to withstand the torture. When Paul effortlessly withstands the pain and passes the test, Mohayim, who is still enraged by Jessica's decision to defy the sisterhood and give birth to a male rather than a girl is intrigued by the potential she sees in 15-year-old Paul because he has endured more suffering than any other Bene Gesserit newbie. There is history behind these happenings. The reason for her anger is simple. Lady Jessica had messed up the Bene Gesserit's plans to produce the Kwisatz Haderach, or the Messiah. Lady Jessica was supposed to give birth to a girl who was to be wedded to House Harkonnen and then have a male child herself who would go on to become the Kwisatz Haderach. This Messiah was extremely important to the Bene Gesserit as they wished to be able to genetically engineer a man who would be able to undergo the spice agony ritual, allowing him to access the ancestral memories of both male and female ancestors. However, when Lady Jessica chooses to have a boy since the Bene Gesserit sisters have complete fertility control, their plans are derailed. This was the main reason why Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim looked at Paul and Jessica with suspicion. Later, in her capacity as the Imperial Truthsayer, Mohayim is seen traveling with Emperor Shaddam IV to Arrakis, where she she encounters the pre-born Aaliyah, Paul's four-year-old sister, whom she refers to as an abomination. She even has a deeply invigorating encounter with young Aaliyah as the little girl practically enters into her mind, something that simply would not have been possible for any other child of her age. She recognizes that Aaliyah is special, and if you want to know more about Saint Aaliyah of the Knife, then you should check out our Aaliyah Explainer video. Coming back to the Reverend Mother though, simply being the Emperor's truthsayer is enough to showcase the prestige and status she held in Dune society. She was essentially the Emperor's most important advisor, since she could detect when a person was speaking the truth or lying, but more on her powers later. Eventually, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim observes Paul and Fade Rotha engage in a ritual fight to the death, and she becomes alarmed. It is important to understand that as Reverend Mother, she's in charge of many of the Bene Gesserit's political machinations as well as the outcomes of their breeding programs. And thus, when Paul and Fade Rotha duel, she becomes increasingly worried about how the duel might turn out, because it could be a major disaster for the Bene Gesserit breeding arrangement. Two end products of their lengthy and expensive program were facing each other in a battle to the death that could easily claim them both. If they both passed away here, Aaliyah, the Abomination, and Fade Rotha's abominable daughter, who is still a newborn, would be the only survivors, creating many problems for the Bene Gesserit and Dune politics in general. However, before her worst fears can be realized, Paul succeeds in the duel, and finally realizing the inevitable outcome of the situation Paul had cleverly set up, Mohayim forces Shaddam to accede to Paul's demands, enabling Paul to remove Shaddam and take over as Emperor in his place. Even after Paul becomes the Emperor, Mohayim does not rest easy. The Reverend Mother participates in the plot to overthrow Paul Atreides' leadership in Dune Messiah after he ascends to the Golden Lion Throne and launches his jihad against the Empire. She conspires to introduce the Tleilaxu Gola hate into the court 
in order to undermine Paul's faith in his prescience and ultimately bring about his downfall, together with the Tleilaxu face dancer Sightail, the Spacing Guild navigator Edric, and Princess Irulan of House Carino. However, it is tough to overthrow the people's messiah, and Mohayim is brought into Paul's custody and forbidden from ever returning to Arrakis after it is discovered that she is aboard a Highliner in orbit above the planet. However, instead of imprisoning her or punishing her, knowing about the immense political influence held by the Reverend Mother, Paul tries to bargain with Mohayim after learning that the Bene Gesserit want to buy his genetic material for their breeding program. Paul thus offers her something of the highest value, his sperm, in exchange for the Sisterhood's support of his decision to forego having children with Princess Irulan and the assurance that his concubine Cheney will be safe. But since artificial insemination is prohibited following the Butlerian Jihad, this is a challenging proposition for Mohayim. Finally, when the plot takes a turn and Sightail is killed, Edric is put to death in the year 10,207 AG on Aaliyah's instructions by the Fremen Nabe Stilgar. Mohayim is likewise killed by Stilgar, despite earlier directives from Paul to spare her life. This happens after Paul leaves for the desert, thus bringing an end to the Reverend Mother's life. Interestingly, Mohayim is revealed in the prequel novels to the Dune series, Prelude, to be Lady Jessica's mother and Paul's secret grandmother. The writers claim that this information was taken directly from Frank Herbert's working notes for the first Dune series. If this is true, and fans accept it as part of the series, it could serve as an increased explanation with respect to Paul's powers, the Reverend Mother's actions, and Lady Jessica's motivations. What are your thoughts on this surprising secret lineage? The Reverend Mother appeared in almost every major Dune adaptation. It's not a surprise that this character has appeared in almost all major Dune adaptations, because her presence and political machinations are what kicks off the story of Paul Atreides as his family moves to Arrakis. Over the years, many graceful and strong actresses have taken up the role. Starting with the film Dune, which was released in the year 1984, the character of Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim was played by Sean Phillips, who was depicted as a bald-headed, silver-toothed witch with wisdom centuries ahead of her physical age. Phillips is a Welsh actress who started off in theatre before moving on to movies and television. She is a heavily awarded actress, and she played the role of the Reverend Mother brilliantly. There were comments and criticism since the physical appearance and styling choice of her character was a marked deviation from the book's descriptions. However, her presence was immense and was felt throughout the film. Her main role in the film was to test Paul and reveal some of the political schemes of the Bene Gesserits and their goal to facilitate the birth of the Messiah or the Kwisatz Haderach. Next, Zuzana Gizelrova played the role of Mohayim in the 2000 miniseries Frank Herbert's Dune and its 2003 sequel, Frank Herbert's Children of Dune. This depiction was much closer to the actual character description of the Reverend Mother, although she was shown as being too young or too beautiful according to some fans. Gislarova is a Czech actress, and her role as the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim is what gained her fame in the United States. Before her appearance in this role, she was largely unknown to the US and world audience, mainly acting in Czech media. Once again, since this one also tells the same story, we see Gislarova test Paul and voice her displeasure to Lady Jessica for having a son instead of a daughter. Not just this, she also featured in a larger role in Children of Dune since she had an active part in plotting Paul's demise. Last but not least, we come to the most recent iteration of this character, which appeared in the much-hyped 2021 Dune movie, which featured Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, and even Jason Momoa. In this film, the role of the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim is played by actress Charlotte Rampling. She's an English actress who has appeared in English, French, and Italian language independent European films. She was a swinging 60s icon who started off as a model. She is a well-known actress who has already received the Best Actress Award at the Berlin Film Festival and the European Film Awards. She has also been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. At the 74th Venice International Film Festival in 2017, she was awarded the Volpi Cup for Best Actress for Hannah. She has also been awarded an Honorary César, the Legion of Honor, by France. Additionally, she was given the OBE, a British Excellence Award, in 2000 for her contributions to the arts, and in 2015, the European Film Awards presented her with a Lifetime Achievement Award. In fact, many fans felt that Rampling was perfect for this role and would be able to do justice to the character. Paul's mental and physical strength was put to the test as he prepared to carry out his mission by Rampling's character. Further, in this particular film, she was also shown to be instrumental in keeping both Paul and Jessica alive when Baron Harkonnen invaded their palace and killed Paul's father, Duke Leto. She convinced him to let the two live, and, well, the rest is history. 
What are the unique abilities of Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohia? The Reverend Mother possesses a staggering variety of powers at her disposal, just like her fellow Bene Gesserit members. Thanks to her age and position, it is understood that she has spent years honing her skills, such as fertility control, which allows her to choose when to become pregnant and determine the gender of the child, and oral analysis, which involves tasting something only once and being able to analyze it chemically. She is most notable for possessing the capabilities of the weirding way, the voice, truth sense and petite perception. Here is a breakdown of all of these powers. Regardless of where they stand in the organizational structure, every member has complete control over every muscle and fiber in their body thanks to their mastery of the breathing and muscle disciplines known as prana and bindu. This obviously has a big part to play in their power of fertility choice, but has an even bigger role to play in their offensive powers. This enables the members to strike with tremendous physical force while remaining immobile and bending their last toe joint. Because of their incredible strength, the Bene Gesserit martial arts aren't even focused on using weapons. Instead, they can use unarmed attacks that result in damaging physical blows and move very quickly and precisely. The term, the weirding way, is frequently used to describe this fighting technique in the Dune universe, and Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayan is a master of this technique. Another significant ability of the Bene Gesserit is the voice, which they use to command others using certain sound frequencies that only they themselves can resist. This is seen when Mohayan speaks to Paul during their first meeting and is evident, especially in Frank Herbert's Dune miniseries. Further, the members of the Bene Gesserit who have received training as truthsayers, such as Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim herself, are particularly skilled at examining people's speech and physical demeanor to determine whether they are telling the truth or lying. This is also why Mohayim was recruited by the Emperor to serve as his Imperial truthsayer, considering that her abilities as a truthsayer were beyond compare. Another ability possessed by Mohayim is an ability known as Petite Perception, which refers to to the ability to spot hidden objects like hidden weapons or thoughts. The Reverend Mother had to concentrate a lot just to give Paul Atreides the pain test on Kaladin. However, it also demonstrated her own skill and discipline. Just like other Bene Gesserit members, she is also able to change her metabolism to the point where she can make poisons harmless. This is extremely important and integral since it is using this very power that Bene Gesserit members can become Reverend Mothers. Mohayim underwent Spice Agony, a ritual where a Bene Gesserit sister is made to ingest the water of life. The water of life is the final exhalation of a sandworm as it drowns and it contains a large amount of concentrated spice, which the Bene Gesserit member has to convert into a neutral substance to be able to survive and unlock the memory of her ancestors, becoming a Reverend Mother. Gaius Helen Mohayim, who became a Reverend Mother after finishing the spice agony with the water of life, shares the memories of previous generations and thus has wisdom much beyond her years. Not only can she use that wisdom, but she also has the honor of being able to give all of her wisdom to any new Reverend Mother she chooses when she decides to leave the physical plane. Thus, Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim was a tough cookie. She was respected and feared at the same time and knew how to use her powers most effectively. Her opinion was valued in the Emperor's court, and very few people dared mess with her since her age and her powers gave her a commanding aura. Many think that she is the leader of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. However, this is not true. She is simply one of the many Reverend Mothers and still reports to the Reverend Mother Superior. However, she is indeed one of the most powerful and is in the thick of politics and schemes in the Dune universe, thanks to her skills and social standing. She's all set to reappear in the upcoming Dune movie. As the Emperor will be introduced in the flesh and she is his truthsayer, Charlotte Rampling's Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother character, Gaius Helen Mohayim, is still alive in the world and is expected to appear in the upcoming movie, with Paul Atreides playing his chosen part of the Kwisatz Haderach. The sequel will place more emphasis on the Bene Gesserit, who were first featured in important sections in Dune Part 1. Although the Bene Gesserit's future, which was significantly altered by Leto's Sent in Children of Dune will not be explored because both of Villeneuve's Dune films are adaptations of the original Dune novel. The prequel novel, Sisterhood of Dune, written in 2012 by Bruce Herbert, Frank Herbert's eldest son, will probably serve as the primary source of inspiration for the next prequel series. The book, which should make a compelling film adaptation, discusses the difficulties after the Butlerian Jihad. Further, even though Bene Gesserit's breeding program has spent thousands of years trying to create a male Reverend Mother, a Kwisatz Haderach, 
It doesn't mean that when one does happen, the Reverend Mother will be content with it. The Kwisatz Haderach was intended to be the result of a son of House Harkonnen and a daughter of House Atreides. Thus, she punishes Lady Jessica for bearing a son to Duke Leto I. We will largely see how this pans out and her interactions with Paul as he launches his bid to become Emperor and Messiah. Many have speculated that she will aggressively attempt to take part in the coup against Paul Atreides in Herbert's Dune follow-up in an effort to overthrow him and the Jihad that has broken out in his name with disastrous effects. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mahayim is an integral character in the Dune universe. Her abilities set her apart from many other characters, and fans of the novels know the Reverend Mother is significantly more complicated than the movie depicts. She is a person of tremendous authority, both within the Bene Gesserit and in her capacity as a truthsayer for the Emperor, and her interactions with House Atreides have a bearing on the legacy of that family, both on Arrakis and beyond in the known world. Hopefully, this will be translated into Rampling's portrayal trail in Dune Part 2, which is all set to release later this year. What are your thoughts on this character? Don't forget to let us know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day. You dismissed my mother in her own house. Come here, kneel.